Pittsburgh Zoning Board of Adjustment. Uh, my name is Charles Putnam. I'm, for now anyway, the chair of the, of the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Uh, the first order of business is the call to order and then roll call by the reporting secretary. Um, so the members present are Charles Putnam, chair, John Hammond, vice chair, Sue Nastasi, Business is a public hearing. Uh, it is the application of Lorax Sustainable Development. Should I get the name correct? Yes, Lorax Sustainable Development uh, is seeking an adjustment after hearing under Section 11.3.1 Administrative Decision Appeals to allow for the construction of a structure with a 2,000 foot square foot footprint on tax lot 20, the tax map 20. Lot 19-3, where a previous zoning board decision restricted any structure constructed on that lot to 1,400 square feet maximum. And on the public hearing, the reporting sec secretary shall read the application and report on how the public notice and personal notice is handled. Certified mail and uh, notice of <coughs> imposter Daily Democrat, as well as various locations around town. All right. And who is representing Lorax? I am Mike Brigham. Okay. Mr. Brigham, do you want to make a presentation to the board? Sure. So, as you remember, a few months ago, I came forward to this board with a, with a problem and asked for some relief. One of my house lots basically didn't have, um, well, my initial application to this board was that I was going to remove some barns that were within a setback, and that one of my house lots, I was asking to change the setback from 250 feet to 200 feet. As I sat with my engineer before I came in here, I said to him that I don't want to upset the balance. If we're removing 2,800 square feet from inside that setback, we should make a commitment up front that we won't put back any more than 2,800 square feet to <coughs> give us this relief. But when I came in here at that time, I had two lots that I was requesting um, relief on. And so I took the 2,800 square feet, and in the application, I asked if I could use all of it. And I took it and for I showed it as 1,400 square feet on each lot. At the time, my presumption was that I was going to try my hardest to take the existing barns that are on this property and to move them onto the subject lots. And barns are tall, but they have small footprints. So because I was so convinced that that was the best thing to do for these barns, I showed them on each of the lots. At that meeting, this board advised me that one of the two lots that I was proposing had another option. Mike, if you pull that house forward far enough, it wouldn't need it. We would feel more comfortable if you were to come back and represent with something less dramatic. So I came back at the following meeting, and we pulled that house completely out of the 250-foot setback, and we pulled the other one further, so that it was now 200 was all that it would be. Somehow, in the translation, what ended up happening was that the original offer I made, that I would not put any more back in than what I took out of 2,800 square feet, because it got divided on two lots, and because one lot got dropped, 
ended up hanging on this 1,400 square foot footprint. I was happy to live with that because I was still optimistic. It, it really is my desire as I develop this property to maintain the integrity that it has. I look at it as, as a, um, it's a Victorian estate property that's been around for 170 years. I'm very happy that I'm maintaining the existing house, that I, I just had designs drawn up for the carriage house that I'm very proud of, and I was able to save one of the barns that is completely outside of the 250-foot setback, and I'm excited. I mean, these are the era that the, the property represents. Um, but heartbreakingly as it is, I hired a company called Preservation Timber Planning. And when it finally came down to actually bidding what it would require to move a barn onto a new foundation, I'll be honest, it was almost $200,000 per barn. I couldn't believe it. The, 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 the saying was it wasn't the right thing to do. At the end of the day, what we ended up doing, and I have photos here, is what we ended up doing is removing um, the barns, but taking them apart piece by piece and, and circulate them so that they'll get reused, except for this one barn, which I consider the best one. But now that I cannot move the barns onto the property, I have no choice but to try to look at it, the, the lots that I couldn't keep one of the original buildings on, to look at it like a regular subdivision. And um, it's hard to build a home in a 1,400 square foot footprint and have a garage um, I think that the mistake, that this is a mistake I made. First of all, optimism in believing I could save more than, than one of the barns by moving them around onto lots. It was also my mistake by coming in here with the offer that I would limit. All I was asking for was a set foot back change. I then added into it, limiting how much I would put in that change. And come to find out after talking to my engineer, there isn't really any benefit. I could take this 1,400 square footprint that I'm allowed and put a tennis court beside it. it the, the limit that I've set on this doesn't really strike any benefit, but it's created a detriment that I hadn't thought of. Now I have a subdivision of nice, um, normal homes, and I found uh, a, a couple who fell in love with that lot. I personally, referred back to my first application where I said I'd like to limit what I put back to the 2,800 square feet that I'm taking out and somehow believe that because I dropped a lot, the amount I would be allowed would double on the other lot. It didn't strike me until far too late that I had put a permanent uh, uh, restriction on this lot that would cause it to be different than all the other lots in the subdivision. Um, and, and so at this point, what I'm asking is that the variance I asked for was the, initially, before I got confused, was can one of the lots um, have a 200 foot setback rather than a 250? And the, the dedication that I would not, that I would take care to remove all of the other structures and thrive under garages and things that were inside that wetland, and, or that setback, the structure setback. And, stay with that initial belief that was important to me, which is to put less than that back in, but not to be restricted to half what I took out when that decision really was made because I had two lots and, and an unworkable plan. Um, I want to tell you I'm proud of the property. I would love to, is it okay, can I show you a picture of how the barns have, have changed since you've probably seen them last? I don't know if anyone has been do we have copies of I did have copies. Um, I did it before and after, and I tried to stand in the same place so that you could just get an overview. For instance, I'm standing on the lot that I'm talking about when I took these pictures called Side View. There was a one, two, three, four, five-story barn with huge steel beams cut into the earth. It was bad, and I stood by what I said I would do to this board before and removed every part of it respectfully. What you see left now, if you look at the front picture, the little barn in the middle, but you see that, that
that steel roof with the one window, that's all that remains. Everything else is gone, and the land has been reclaimed. Um, what, what we're hoping is that, that Heather has designed a home for this lot. Her friend has bought the lot right beside it. These are the only two um, that I have under agreement. These two are friends that know each other. They actually went out of their way to come to the planning board and combine a driveway going down the center um, so they could have a shared driveway. A, a lot of, when you try to do a conservation subdivision, it's different than a normal one. Had I had just divided this up into seven large lots, houses could go where they want to. I wouldn't have to keep going back and creating grading plans and trying to fine tune all these little things. But out of respect for the land, we kind of put the houses where they belong. And it does cause some of this wrangling more than, than a normal subdivision would, but it's for a good cause. Um, so even them combining their two driveways, um, us agreeing to the restrictions that this board put on us before, that even though you're allowed to do certain things within that 250-foot setback, a lot. I mean, when you when you go to the state's website, they have houses all the way uh, up to 100 feet. We agreed to keep our septic systems out of it, and we have. We agreed to keep um, a 100-foot no-cut setback from the water. This wasn't a restriction from you, but the planning board, um, or it was a request from the planning board that we agreed to. This isn't a case of somebody coming back and asking for more. This is somebody coming back and humbly saying that I wish I never brought up how many feet I took out and how many feet I could put back. To me, it was this honorable thing to bring up. Really, I was just talking about a distance, and, and I mixed into it something that I, I think had I never had said square, feetage coming, square footage coming out, if I had just shown that I was going to clean this up and that I was looking for it, I don't think that restriction would have been put there. And at this point, it's now become, my mistake has kind of become a hardship on that lot, which will no longer match the others. And so I'm hoping that you can see how I got to where I got to and, and how bad I feel about it. And I'm, I'm hoping that we could just change the restriction to approve the house that Heather designed, which has a 2,000 square foot, but it's still smaller than the, uh, than what I removed, still less than what I asked for in my application before we had to come back a second time, but more than, than what is now on the restriction. And that's right. all I have. All right, thank you, Mr. Brigham. Um, I, I'm going to take the first question, but then turn it over to the board because I'm confused. We noticed an administrative appeal of our previous decision, but I'm looking at the application which talks about a variance. What are you seeking tonight? So I received the variance. We met all the criteria, and this board gave me a variance to allow one of my lots to extend its building envelope 200 feet rather than the required 250. That variance that I received had a condition hung on it, and the condition that hung on it I think I brought about. I don't think that, that there's any good to the wetland to have it. I don't think there's any harm in not having it. It's not talking about coverage, it's talking about a footprint size. What error did the board make that you There's not an error. I'm asking for one of the conditions that put up, it was my error. I'm not saying that the board made an error. I'm saying that because I came forward and I said, I'd like to propose that in this variance that I'm asking for, that I commit, that I will not put in more than the 2,800 square feet that I removed. I threw that out there. Let's get to some questions from the sure. board, but if you could do some thinking on Mr. Brigham. I'm struggling with what the what the standard is that the, this board has to apply to your application. Because if it's a variance, it's one standard. If it's an administrative appeal, it's going to be a different one. We'll get to your comments in a second, Mr. Mm -hmm. Clark. I, I might be able to <coughs> excuse me, clarify it. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, <coughs> excuse me, Tom Clark, for the record, uh, code enforcement. I wrote a letter. Um, that said that the footprint of the building was too large based on the approved plan, so not only the condition of approval from the zoning board, but also it was put as a condition of approval on the planning board. <clears throat> so in my mind, 
it changed the dimensional regulations of that lot. So I thought it was a variance. Um, I think that was the way I phrased it. Because um, the administrative decision is kind of a judgmental thing. But I'm thinking the, uh, the variance is, is pretty black and white. On the plan it says 1,400. Regardless of the background, which, which I don't disagree with, um, it, it really is, in, in my opinion, no reason not to have a 2,000 square foot house. I mean, I, I think the, uh, the application of the variance is well written, especially the hardship thing, which usually, the, as you know, is the toughest to prove. But I don't think there is another lot, not only in this subdivision, but in the whole town that has that separate restriction on it. So I, in my mind, it's a variance. I'm not it's sure about the page. Okay, let's get to some questions from the board. Um, I'm going to pass for right now. Ms. Mears? Um, so the proposed structure is not going to be within 250 feet of the comprehensive shoreline? No. The, okay. the, oh, the septic design that we've submitted, everything is within the 200 feet setback that we were given on the, the variance. Okay. Nothing, none of any part of it, including the septic system, exceeds that. All my lots are 250, which, as you know, is 60% of this whole property. This one lot has a 200, and still it's a very confided, um, because of the angle shape um, of the lot, it's still not a very large angle. So what's, what's the purpose of sh showing us this picture? What's because I made a commitment to you when I was here before. You didn't move it off. And, and well, the, the idea was that I would get all of this mess out of that wetland setback that had maybe not been properly permitted. Yeah. And so I just want to show that we had a deal back and forth and that I took my end seriously. This, this yeah. isn't something I take lightly. But I, I proposed a restriction when I asked for this variance that was unnecessary, that didn't add any benefit to the wetland or the town. It doesn't stop us from coverage. It's just simply limiting the size of a footprint. And, and, and I made a mistake, not, not anyone else. But it's now creating this hardship. And so I'm honestly hoping that. So what, what is this building? Is this a house? So that is uh, early 1800s post and beam barn that we're going to convert yes, into. Yes, it's familiar. Except is this a residential house? It will be when we're done. Right now, it's the barn that we're making plans and engineering to, to okay, convert to. So that was. But that's not. That was not. Okay, so you're asking for a variance on this? No. That, as far as I'm concerned, in our last conversation, it, what I was portraying to this board is my goal is to save all three of the barns. I was going to take them and I was going to move them so that they were outside the setback and I was going to take off all the other parts. Yeah. I've done that, but I was only able to save one. And so that, I'm only showing that to, to say that I have, it's more the second picture where you see the side view where I'm standing on the subject lot to show what I've taken out because I said I would and now it is. It's all been um, reclaimed the way nature wanted it to be. And so I just wanted to, to at least be able to verify that what I said I would do at the last meeting I did do. So, you know, originally the barn was approximately 10,000 square feet, if my memory is correct. So, so what, what is this structure? So how much have, have you removed? So if you go back to the first page here, if you can look in the middle at that barn that has one window, oh, I see that, so I'm that's all that's left. So square footage. All right, well, actually, it was about 40,000 square feet, and now uh -huh. it was about 40,000 square but, feet. But the footprint was above... 10, okay, the footprint. So now yep. the footprint is 36 by, it's about 1,800 square feet. That barn is about 36 feet wide and 50 feet deep. So less than 2,000. That's on the next two lots over from the one that has the variance. That, that barn there is outside the 250 set barn. You know, this barn, which, which we're talking about here, mm -hmm. this is the one that was closer than the 250. So I'm talking about a whole different lot, 
I just wanted to show you guys that I had removed all the barns like I said I would. Yeah, but I'm checking as to how much that you, you know, that you removed because originally well this entire barn was 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 gonna get removed. All that was what I said was that all that was inside of the setback would be removed yes. and, and relocated. Yes. Uh, that one that's left there happens to fall outside of the 250 foot setback. Oh, it does? And, yes. So the entire structure wasn't. Gotcha, because you removed all the backs. The, the, the chunk to the right, when you look at the other picture yes. from the side, that yes. whole piece is gone. And that was the, the, not only was that piece a structure inside the 250, but it had a driveway and a drive under garage in it. So um, all that's been removed. All that remains now is outside of the 250 foot setback. Would you like to, could I show you a picture of the property we are talking about? So, Would that be helpful? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the barns may be more confused, so but I, I'm proud of what I'm doing, so maybe it was okay. So, so this is the house in the garage. Um, I had to get an architect to try and find something to fit in it because it's such a unique um, building envelope that this has. So I, I guess what I'm struggling with um, is so if we do process it as a variance, um, I, I'm struggling with whether or not there's a hardship here, Mr. Brigham. Let me let me lay it out and give you a chance to persuade me that I'm that my concerns are misplaced or that I'm wrong, but um, the Riverine setback uh, was adopted, as I understood it, by the voters of the town of Rollinsburg to protect water quality and to protect views uh, and to protect the, um, to some extent, the erosion of um, uh, uh, of the banks of the uh, Mill Pond and the, and the Salmon Falls River. Um, you came to the board with a proposal for variance to allow you to intrude into that setback. Um, and I don't fully recall, I think the board debated it quite a bit with you that I think there was a butter, some of butter debate as well um, about impacts on views um, and potential impacts on you know, runoffs and so forth. And as I understood it, um, the board had the ability, authority to condition the variance on a voluntary restriction that you agreed to, which was, okay, we're going to come into the river and set back, but we're going to keep the house small um, as a condition of getting the approval uh, to, to intrude on that. And whether or not the state requirement is different from the town requirement, I don't think there's anything illegal or unconstitutional about the town requirement. And so I'm struggling if it's a voluntary condition, if the purpose of the condition is to protect the views and to protect, or you know, to minimize the impact on views, minimize the impact on water quality, minimize the environmental impacts of intrusion into the setback, I don't see how this is a hardship different or unique to this parcel. It seems to mean something that was um, voluntarily agreed to as a condition of getting the variance in the beginning and that one of the things we discussed was you wanted to keep the, um, the common space in the middle of the parcel. You could have sacrificed some or all of that common space in order to keep all of the, the housing envelopes out of the, out of the setback. And so really what I worry about in granting the, um, in granting the variance is one, it seems like a self-imposed hardship, and I worry that it's contrary to the intent of the statute because what we what we really worry about every time this zoning board of adjustment makes a decision, we worry about we're setting a precedent and now Correct. other people are going to say, I know I agreed to this condition as, a, as part of getting the approval for the original variance, but I, I made a mistake, but the board made a mistake, and so now we want something much bigger or we want something different. And so I worry about the precedent a little bit as well. So, you know, I, my mind's not fully made up. I understood. But I'd like to, yeah. So first of all, there was no abutter interaction as far as views or water quality during the, the ZDA meeting. We had abutters come and support 
And, and like today, I don't think um, there's opposition. Secondly, you're right, it was self-imposed. That's why the first part of my statement was honestly explaining that this isn't, you can see the track that led to the mistake. I mean, it's clear that, that I'm not trying to make things up. But lastly, there isn't really a benefit. I mean, one of the things is that when you look at a variance is, is the benefit, does the benefit outweigh the, the detriment? And what is the benefit to, to, once we've agreed to a certain setback for our structures, and we've agreed to keep septics and other things out of that setback that maybe didn't even have to, we've agreed, we're, we're purposely consolidating driveways, and we're purposely extending setbacks. We're, we're honestly creating a conservation subdivision. If we weren't, we wouldn't have these problems. What is the benefit? And, and that's what I asked Bob Stoll before I came here tonight, my engineer. I said, Bob, if I were, if we were restricting coverage, how much you can cave inside this area, you can't put a swimming pool, you can't put a tennis court, we don't want the coverage, but we're not. We're saying you can cover whatever you want, we're just restricting the size of the actual home. She can have a small home and a, and a huge driveway that covers the same amount at, at the end of the day, I think that I proposed something that didn't really need to be proposed. I don't know if a lot of weight was put on that part of it to make this decision, but I can say that the main thing I was trying to say was I won't put in more than I took out. And I've taken out 2,800 square feet of nasty structure, and I'm just looking to put in a normal house like everybody else's house. As Tom said, I proposed a restriction that maybe no, that no one else in this town has, and I agreed to it, and I think I have the, the right to do that, but I made a mistake, and it impacts this deed now forever, and it was my negativity that, that did that. It, I'm still far under what I've taken out. If, if I came and presented it this way initially, I just want to put a normal house. I'm going to try to put the barn and only use half of what I took out. But if I can't, just let me have a normal house. I think it would have gone through. I think that I self-inflicted something here. And now, is there a hardship? If you take out the fact that I participated in it, yes. This lot now has a restriction that doesn't benefit anything, that, unless I'm, I'm wrong but detriments it and the neighborhood around it. And actually adversely could affect the properties around it just by being odd and different and, and for no necessary reason. Um, Comment from a butters or Mr. Clark? Comment from a butters? Hi, yes, my name is Karina Molina. I'm also a potential uh, buyer. of so the other the neighbor. Can um, you please tell me your name? Karina, C-O-R-I-N-N-A. C -O -R -I -N -N -A. Last name Molino, M-E-L-I-N-O. And your address? Six Great Works Drive, South Square Work. <coughs> okay. I just wanted to make a quick comment too that, um, you know, they're from the building, the envelope, their house is, it, they worked really hard with their architect and Mike as well to make sure their house was in that building envelope so that there was no issue there. And they were then told when they started realizing there was maybe a potential issue there with the square footage um, on the foundation that they could go all the way up. And that's not what, um, you know, you talked about it maybe in interfering with views and whatnot. Um, so that would definitely affect that there. We are obviously sharing a driveway. We have put a lot of time and energy and thoughts into preserving. And we come from a neighborhood, and uh, I do, in South Burke that's, Pretty similar on, on the Great Works um, pond, Lee's Mill pond there, and yeah, we totally respect the fact that Mike has taken a lot of time and energy in preserving and the conservation piece and working in with those building envelopes is definitely important. And I don't believe it's, um, Heather, how much square footage increases it to? Could you could address yourself to the board. Oh, sorry. Um, so it, it, it is to my understanding too that it, 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 the building envelope is definitely being well within um, to what they've proposed and what they've already built. So I just wanted to kind of get that clear. Thank you. You're
that the machines are or what you need what you need for that. Um, but we, um, um, like Brunette said, we have worked hard with um, an architect to be able to stay within the building envelope. We're not asking for outside it at all. We just want to be able to build in um, the area that meets all the setback requirements and ordinances for the town and what you have set. Um, so um, I guess I don't know what to say. It's very personal to me. We've been working really hard. We fell in love with the land, and um, we're really hoping that we could um, build this home because the it's uh, 2,600 square feet. So I'm not trying to build like a mansion or squeeze something into a place where it wouldn't fit well. I think having um, already I have my garage as part of my house in the front. And um, you know, there's not enough room to even put a garage on the side of it. So I've already like incorporated it in and and got everything to fit. So I'm hoping you'll consider all of that. Thank you, Miss Stanley. I guess I'll comment a little bit. So um, I'm a little bit distressed because this is the biggest project before the planning board in the last year. And the zoning board, and I, I don't know of any development that in the last year that more of the planning board and zoning board resources went towards. I am, I know a lot of careful thought went into the whole um, layout and setbacks and in, in, in regard to the river and so forth. And, um, and a very qualified <coughs> engineer with you through, throughout that, and um, I'm troubled that you want to give us this small piece and sort of uh, go back on the on the grand design that we had compromised that I think with the planning board and the zoning board we went through. Um, I don't think it meets the true definition of a hardship under the, the statute, and uh, I'm not sure why the garage couldn't be built on the, you know, there are other houses with garages that are on the first floor, and the house is built up. And I, I guess I just I'm just struggling with um, with the hardship and trying to go back and, and remember uh, everything, uh, the uh, the entire process of, of going through it. So I haven't made up my mind, but those are my my thoughts, anyways. I have just a personal um, with that as well. Um, my mother-in-law is handicapped. And so um, we had looked at trying to make that decision, but for us, that's really difficult because she can only handle a couple stairs at a time. So to do that um, wouldn't really work for our family. Like, it's a tough decision. So the drive under, right? The drive, yeah. So the grand design is something that I'm so proud of. I mean, at the end of the day, to do a conservation subdivision, to take the waterfront and put it in one piece that's under the protection of a group rather than individual pieces. It, it caused me a lot of grief. I mean, moving these septics and, and trying to tight, fit these tight areas and to try to blend everything together and, and to do the right thing for this waterfront that's preserved. I'm proud of the grand design and how close to it I've been able to keep. If the only change that I've come to since I've presented what I wanted to do is I can't put a barn on this house, I, on this lot, and I, I'd like to just put a, a, a regular normal um, house on it. But other than that, um, there have been no, uh, um, I've done nothing outside of what I initially pictured when I first walked this land, which was to group the houses together protect the land around it. One lot I graciously was allowed to overstep. It put more restrictions on me as to where septics could go. I've agreed on my own, without pressure, to increase setbacks from what even the town requires for no-cut zones. We have people like Heather and, 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 and the Molinos who are nature lovers, who have mountain bikes and kayaks and are here because there, she's coming from another river near property because of it and because of respect for it. And 
everybody compliments me when they walk this property with me. It isn't some used car salesman trying to push stuff out. It's cleaning up Dr. Bennett's problem and putting in a beautiful residential subdivision in a residential zone. These barns have been a huge heartache. And it was devastating for me to find out that I can't just move them and keep everything the correct age, the, the early, the mid-1800s like I want to. I'm able to keep three out of seven, and I live on the property. I love it there. These are the kind of neighbors I want. This was one of the hardest things to hit me in a long time when I found out that a mistake I made affected um, with Heather and her husband. But when, when you say the grand design, I just want to say that this is, if, if, it, if when you drive through there now, that's not what you pictured, this is what I was trying to present to you. A beautiful neighborhood of people who care about nature, sharing some really special land. None of us are going over our setbacks, including the lot with the variance. It's a condition that I put up that, come to find out, really doesn't have any environmental benefit. It was a mistake. I would still be far under what I took out, and it's still much better than it was before I came along. It is harder when you redevelop something than when you develop from scratch. You're working around to try to save this carriage house. We had to put the driveway on the other. There's, there's a lot of give in order to try to work around something that's already there without just bulldozing it over. And this is one of those issues where I agreed to a condition without fully understanding what I was agreeing to and had no, I, I had no clue that it would cost this much to move a barn. I, I'm still stunned. Um, Can I just ask a question? Sure. Um, was this condition as part of the decision of the zoning board or was it a part of um, the It was in my application. Plan? When I applied, I threw it right out there. I don't want to remove more than 28, I won't put back more than the 2800. And because, and I said divided between the two lots. And I think the restriction to 2800 square feet was incorporated into the. We're cool with the 2800. The problem is when we dropped one of the lots, it went down to 1400. Okay. And that's where the problem came. Okay. And, and that was why I wanted to see that it's an honest mistake. When, when, when we pulled the other house out, we should have doubled the ask on the lot we still had. We still would have been under. And 2000 is way under. Any other questions? Yeah. Questions or comments? Yes, I'd like to make a comment because, uh, the, you know, there has been a change since since the last time that we that we granted you the variance. And the change is, is that Rollinsford is one of 12 area communities that the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services is, is requiring to reduce <clears throat> nitrogen discharge to the Great Bay watershed. Th this includes the Salmon Falls River. Increasing the footprint of the building from 1,400 square feet to 2,000 square feet will affect the impervious surface and may increase the nitrogen discharge to the Seven Falls River. So this this is a major change since so since the zoning board granted you the variance. That's that's good to know, and I like it. I think that's a good initiative. Again, the state has a, a you've taken a much stricter stance than the state has as to how far things should be away. But what I what I want to mention is that what we're the restriction that's on us is the footprint size of the house, not coverage. So what you're saying. It isn't in fact true. We could cover just as much as we want to with a bigger driveway or parking lot. If, if our house got smaller, we, we could still cover the same amount without any special permission. If, if because of this coverage there's some increased runoff, there's other ways we can deal with it as well. We're, we're, not, um, we're not trying to expand impervious area at all. We're just trying to say that rather than to have a drive under garage with a, you know, a, a bigger parking lot, that we would like to have a, a 2,000 square foot, foot footprint, which is what we submitted there. But it is not about impervious. This this restriction that's on me is not about impervious area. It's just talking about the square shape of the house, not exceeding 1,400 square feet. But it's your your right to alter the properties 
within the uh, variance requirement, I mean, excuse me, uh, within the uh, <coughs> variance ordinance. And, and I think one of them is that you can, you can develop 25% of the property, right? What I'm saying is that if we could just live by the normal rules, I added an additional restriction onto this piece. When I came to you, I said, because I'm removing 2,800 square foot of, of five-story barn, can I have that 28 back to put on two lots? You guys said make it one lot. And immediately, without me really figuring out what was going on, because it's my, my fault, no one else's, I thought I still was asking the same question. If you read the application I submitted, it specifically was, can, if I remove this 2,800 that, that may or may not be permitted to be there, but without someone forcing me to, I'm offering to remove it, which I've done, can I, can I have that as my limit when I go back at this other lot? Normally, I wouldn't propose a limit. I'm just asking for a setback change. I've went and put a limit into it that has done some things to this lot that I didn't anticipate, and it was innocently done. This isn't a bait and switch. You can see how it happened. Um, but it's not about impervious. The lot, we could pave the whole building envelope. What, what she's designed is, is very well done and fits in nicely. Yes, it is. And, and Okay. Wouldn't change. Any further questions? All right. Do you want to make a rebuttal statement unless there's any other comment from the letters? Go ahead. You get the last word, Mr. Brigham. Um, all right. So basically, I made a mistake, and I think that I've created an unnecessary hardship. I'm having a hard time seeing the, the harm or the, be the benefit that I created by doing this. As I'm looking back at it, I understand the point that you can make these restrictions, but I honestly don't think that this is what caused this to be a yes. I think that when I said to you guys I was gonna take out this bad barn and put back houses equal to or less than the square footage that I took out, that won the argument. When it got halved is when everything changed. <coughs> and was not intentional by me. I didn't mean to say that if I drop one of the lots, I'm also dropping half of the stuff I'm taking out. But I, but when it happened, I said, if I can utilize these barns, it's irrelevant. And, and I tried hard. No one's tried harder to defend these historic properties than I have. I still think I've made all the, the right decisions, and I do believe I've stood behind everything that I said I would do. Um, if you drive through this neighborhood someday, it will stand out left the way it is now. It's gonna be obvious that something weird happened there, and I'm always gonna know it was my fault. Um, I'm hoping you can see that there isn't any benefit to that restriction that I put in. It doesn't have anything to do with pervious area. It just has to do with the shape of the home, including the garage. The plan that we have before you, if the garage weren't there, it would fit. It's just simply covering the parking area that's, that's created this. And in a barn, it's a long, narrow structure. But most houses don't lay out that way, and not everybody can deal with having a garage in the, in the basement and a whole flight of stairs, as you know. So I'm just hoping you can see my point of view. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brigham. And <coughs> You agree that we're, we are to process this as a request for a variance? I don't test. understand the intricacies. I, I, I have a variance already with a condition. Okay, yes. No, I don't, yes. Think, I don't think you have a variance for the condition that is now in the deed. And I think Mr. Clark was saying that you're not claiming that the board made a mistake. So I think, I think you're requesting a, a variance. Um, and so the, the applicable test is uh, whether it's contrary to the public interest, uh, whether the spirit of the ordinance would be uh, observed, whether it would do substantial justice, whether it is, uh, wh whether it would have an adverse impact on the value of surrounding properties, uh, whether it would promote orderly development and protect the health, safety, and general welfare of the public, whether, uh, and whether or not it, there's an unnecessary hardship. I so, feel strongly that it needs those. And, and I think we've answered them in the application, and I'm happy to individually, but this is Did we answer the hardship well enough for you? Because 
I did have another, I think what Mr. Clark had said was considered a hardship when I'm looking at one of the documents from the Board of Adjustment. The restriction on one parcel um, balanced by similar restrictions on other parcels in the same zone, that that can create a, a hardship when it's um, not imposed equally on all the other pro property owners. Right, but the difficulty is that other parcels in the zone don't encroach on the setback. Difficulty that we face is that we granted a variance to allow an encroachment into that 250 foot setback, and so uh, it. I can't speak for the board, um, but one of the questions will be is that it may not be unique. It may not be different in kind from what other parcels in that zone have because of the because of the fact that it's in the set where the wind setback. So, so typically, I, if somebody has a variance for. They already have the variance for the 200. Um, does that mean that you normally, oh sorry, 200 foot setback. I don't know all these terms. Does that mean that you normally would restrict the building size? And not in, you normally well, would do that? Normally there are other, um, it's, if this is a unique condition Normally, the ZBA doesn't restrict the size of a house on a parcel. Uh, and normally, the planning board, within certain limits, there are there are setback requirements, front front back side lot setback requirements. There are in some I'm not sure if there are coverage um, requirements in some zones, um, but there are some there are some things in this ordinance that limit the size of a house. What is different is that. Mr. Brigham came before the board and said, I want to make a deal. Let me encroach into the setback for the river, mm -hmm. and I'll keep the house small. And the board said, okay. Um, there was plenty of back and forth between everybody. Okay. Um, but uh, it, from that standpoint, I, don't, I think what's unique here is that Mr. Brigham agreed to it. Um, and I, at the time, no, there were no appeals from the order of Zoning Board of Adjustment saying we'll grant the variant subject to this limitation. Is now there an adverse effect to have? I don't want to deliver. We're going to deliberate this in public. Um, I don't necessarily speak for the board, okay. um, and I don't want to turn a public hearing into a debate between, okay. between the applicant Sorry, I just and one member of the board. Okay. The only other point I want to touch, and then I'll, then I'll leave it, is that a lot of times in the past I've been told that when you ask for a variance. The, the weight that this board has to look at is the, the, the benefit to the landowner versus the detriment to the other people who it could affect. And if there is um, the right balance, then the landowner can win. If there is no adverse effect, it usually increases the landowner's chances. We know this isn't going to hurt surrounding property values, and we know that um, it's debatable whether there is any um, uh, thing to be won by, by keeping it the way it is. And it's obvious that there could be benefit to real life people by, by making the change. And I just wanted to throw out there that there should be some scale here that even though, like you say, it, it wasn't as simple as I came in and I said, can I do this? I'll keep it small. It was a complicated two meeting process. and. The size was really only brought up mostly from my initial application. It wasn't. The conversation didn't keep coming. Can you make it smaller? Can you make it bigger? I threw out 2,800 for two lots. The 1,400 automatically got assigned to each lot. I dropped a lot. It, it, it was more complicated. If I had come in and just said, I'll give you this for this, my morals wouldn't let me come back here again. If this person didn't fall in love and a neighbor sharing these two lots side by side, I wouldn't be back here again. I made a mistake and I'm willing to accept it. It affected other people. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to cut you off. I, 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 we've got another go public ahead. hearing. So we, do, we still have to go through deliberations. So okay. I'm done. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. I think There's some emotion here. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I don't, again, we want to have a full opportunity for you to present Thank your you. case. I um, uh, and I don't in any way want to prejudge what, what this board does. So I will close the public hearing.
Sharon, we are in deliberations on the application of Lorax Sustainable uh, Development, LLC. Um, what's the board's pleasure? Do you want to make an opening comment, and then we'll see if we can make a motion? Um, and we'll get, see if there's a sense of the board, um, rather than putting a motion up and knocking it down, and then having to make another motion? Sure. All right. So why don't we do one round of comment, and then um, we'll see if somebody is ready to make a motion, or I'll, I'll try to make some notes and be ready to make a motion. Um, we'll start, I started at this end, I'll start at this end. Mr. Kessel? I'll go pass at the moment. Okay. Yeah, he said many, many times that um, uh, he agreed to uh, uh, a change, a variance, that he, he shouldn't have agreed to. So at this point, uh, to move forward, you know, for those houses. Um, it would be, you know, the houses and the new owners benefit. But at the same time, I realize that you, you mentioned about it would set a precedent uh, to go back and forth on future, uh, future plans, too. So it seemed kind of a difficult... <laughs> So my, my inclination is, and I'll be up front, is, is, is to vote no because uh, it was a bargain for exchange, because I don't think it's a real unnecessary hardship. The only um, thought that I had, and, and I don't know how the board would feel, is to suspend the hearing and go out and have a, a view of the, to take a walk of the, of the property and, and come back another, another night. Uh, that's... So, but th those are my comments, and I'd be, I'd be curious. I'd be happy to hear the other comments from the board members. Uh, again, addressing it as an individual board member, I, I'm not sure I can find that there's a hardship here. Um, the applicant was represented with an engineer throughout those hearings. This board doesn't have an engineer. It doesn't have the benefit of expert testimony, and we have to rely on the on the representations that people in the business and people who are engineers make to us. Um, and I'm just awfully distressed that, um, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that there's a, 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 an inconvenience for the purchasers who fell, fell in love with the property, but um, I do respectfully think that the Riverine setback is important. I think it's important to wildlife. I think it's important to recreation. I think it's important to views. I think it, I think people in this town do notice um, what's going on on that uh, river bank. Um, and so I am worried that unless we really take it seriously, what the variance standard for hardship is, um, I, I understand kind of the safety valve um, thought about hardship, but I just worry that um, we set a precedent for everybody else in town who said, well, I'm, you know, I, I told you one thing in one hearing, uh, it didn't work out so well for me, and now it's up to the board to, to grant a variance for it. And um, uh, really the, the history for this board has been that we've, we've faced a lot of really difficult uh, applications, including this one, um, where um, we, really, we really struggled to meet the, the values that we thought were reflected in the ordinance. Um, for that reason, I, I just don't think I can find hardship. Um, uh, and I, I, again, I'm not insensitive to the position of, of Mr. Brigham or the, uh, his purchasers who would like to do something nice with the property. Um, it sounds like there, it, there may be, I, it sounds like there may be a motion that we should make, unless, Mr. Brigham, do you want to suspend and have a site walk? Yes. Um, that I'd very much like to show you. I, I think on paper and in words, it just sounds like a salesman. I think if you could come and see what we're actually proposing and what we're doing, I think that if you might have a better chance of seeing it my way. Um, Maybe, I although get, you may also get members of the, of the town who um, are not as pleased as your purchasers are with the impacts on the view. But, um, you know, again, we'll notice it up for a site walk. And the, the view has never really come up before. I'm not 100% sure. I mean, obviously, a house that doesn't have a drive under 
garage is a, is a lower house. And you know, as far as the view goes or, or the abutters go, um, I can tell you that, that they love this project and they love these people. I still don't understand the precedent when this is such a unique case. And that's one of the things about the ZBA is every piece of property is so unique that when you start to talk about precedent, if this happens again in your lifetime, this exact way, I would be amazed. And, and I guess I don't understand the, the final quote of protecting it when the size of a footprint really doesn't have an effect on on impervious area. It's not what we could restrict it to what we're proposing here and promise that we're never going to add more impervious area. The way it sits now, the whole thing could be paved. And, and so we have something in front of you that shows that this is the, all we want to do ever. Um, I, um, I'm pumped, but I, if my only chance at this point is to show you closer, I'd like to do that. Um, you know, the sooner the better. I, I see where the, the wind is blowing, and I'm surprised, but um. Again, I don't want to force you to do something. No, either. it's just if there's a pre, if, if if we can't look at this for what belongs there, and we want to go back to Mike agreed, he's admitted that he, he made a mistake and that it's an unnecessary restriction and that it doesn't benefit anybody and that it actually could detriment abutters because we're, we're, we're squeezing in something small where other people are larger. Um, it, if it really just comes down to a, a barter, and, and especially when I don't agree that that's what happened, I didn't come here and say to you, if you'll approve it, let's keep making it smaller until it's acceptable to be approved. I was making the point, I'm taking out 2,800 square feet of barn. I'd like to put back in 2,800 square feet. You mentioned that one of my lots didn't necessarily need to see the setback, and I immediately pulled it back. But I'm not coming in now saying I want more than I took out. I'm still saying less. I'm just saying the restriction that I offered out was a, a, a blatant mistake, and it definitely hurts this piece of property. Period. It just does, and it wasn't for no benefit. But is this, a, is this a variance? Like a variance is supposed to be on an ordinance that, that the town has. So I don't understand. Is there an ordinance that? What is the variance asking? Like from what for ordinance? It's a, a variance from a condition of a previous variance. Is, I mean, like we we really is. thought that what we were trying to say is we passed the variance, we passed the test, that you guys have all voted that rather than a 250 setback, this property passed the SNF test for 200. That was the variance we asked for, and it got it. In that variance, we, you can understand how, attached the condition, it didn't belong there, and it doesn't benefit the watershed. Okay, so Mr. Briegel, I, I, again, I, I don't understand. mean to I understand. I, understand. I, I guess the question <coughs> is, and I don't mean to force you to do something that you don't want to do. If you don't, uh, you, you know. Um, I'm happy to have a site walk with you guys. I'm proud of what I'm doing out there, and I'm happy to. And, and Charlie, just so I'm clear, I want to. I don't want to force it on the board if the board doesn't want to do a site walk. I'm just throwing that out there, and, and I don't know if you want to get a feel for what the board want, feels it would be helpful or not. Uh, quick poll of the board. Are you willing to do a site walk, or do you feel that it was an imposition? Thank you. No, it's not imposition. It's just that we can coordinate with many schedules. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. Yeah. Just cancel. Okay, so, so it sounds like we're going to have a site walk. Let's see if we can get it set up for next week. Um, sure. And maybe um, uh, every, there's a large number of people who are here for the second hearing. Yeah. If you don't mind waiting for the second hearing to be over, so maybe we can coordinate calendars. <laughs> Um, but I worry if we all drag out our calendars, it's going to be another half an hour. So. No, I'm available anytime, so you, you make the okay. and I'll be there. Um, and uh, for the record, I'm going to ask you to make a motion that we suspend processing of this so that you and the board can take a site walk of, uh, the, of the development and look at this parcel in particular. I'd like to formally request that we suspend tonight's meeting, have a site walk on the property, and then Thank you, Mr. Brigham. So um, we will 
suspend our processing of, or our deliberation, I guess, on this, um, on this matter um, at the motion of uh, the applicant. And uh, let's convene immediately after this meeting. I've seen her a little bit. Thank late. you, Mr. Brigham. Um, thank you for your patience. Yeah, thank you for your I was going to say, it looks like she's having fun in Hawaii. Yeah. I mean, it would be hard. I think I've been to a different place than in Lars. I lived there. And my husband was a So I kept calling St. James to get out. Yeah, you, you got it. Now it's only a year. Yeah. But they're only down there for a year? Yeah, but they're back. We get to go to shore duty for three and a half weeks. So they've left the island? Oh, yeah, no, not till June. going to ask a number of questions. No, no, no. I, no, I appreciate that, Mr. Clark. Um, I was, as is often the case, we're, mm -hmm. our board is confused about whether uh, an applicant should go to the planning board first, or the planning consultant first, or to us first. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't mean to give, give anybody the runaround, um, but it's often difficult. Um, sometimes an applicant wants to get a sense of whether the, the concept is approved without putting all the money into developing site plans and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, Mr. Clark, I think, is correct in saying that in order for us to grant the special exception, mm -hmm. we have to find that it otherwise meets the ordinance. And this application doesn't have some of the detail that the, our zoning ordinance um, would require. And, and I would have brought it up sooner. I just saw this today. I, I didn't ask for the application. Um, so I just there's no way to to the approval that the remaining uh, part of the fence will be extended um, around the floor. That would be up to the board. That, that's not my call. It's up to you. May I add something? Sure. That backyard is a three-tier lot. It has three different levels. The lower two levels are entirely fenced in. The upper tier has a staircase going down. If a gate is put in, it meets licensing requirements, and it's fully fenced. And that's why. Yes. <laughs> 
without you, I'm just... It needs to be so, documented. I see. Yeah, it, I don't think uh, Mr. Clark is saying it can't be the, the requirements. Okay. It's more, right. um, it's the, um, the documentation that our board needs and then ultimately the, the um, planning board will need a site plan approval to, to, to grant the use. Um, <coughs> I'm going to look at Mr. Kinsman. I'm sorry, I missed the question. The question is, do they do they need to start with planning board and then come to ZBA, or should they come to ZBA for the special exception and then go back to planning board for site plan approval? Well, we spoke with um, uh, the planning consultant. Yes, there that was it was not mentioned that we ever had to go to planning board. Uh -huh. That we only had to come here for a special exception. Then, then it would be very important. If that I could recommend, do you have a few minutes, Mr. Clark? Yes. That you could maybe sit down with the applicant Oh, oh now. sure, sure. Um, and uh, again, I, what I would recommend is that we not go forward with the hearing tonight, because as I'm looking at the application, it does seem like we're missing some details that we might need. Okay. Um, and where this is a child care thing, I, I, I think the town needs more child care from a personal standpoint, but I also think mm -hmm. the child care is highly regulated. Uh, and Correct. the safety of children is involved. The interest of abutters in terms of their parking and traffic and so forth is involved. <coughs> um, and so I think right from the start, we want to try to get this into a posture where you're comfortable that you're meeting all of the, I'll call it paperwork requirements, but all of the requirements of the various statutes and ordinances so that you've got, you can be really confident as you go forward for state licensure and all of that good stuff. So is this board going to oversee all of the licensing requirements? Because that's a whole separate piece. So as far as within the ordinance right now, my only, uh, the only requirement that I have heard from the, you know, any members is that the, the fencing is required. Um, and that there's no other, I mean, there's a lot of state oversight, don't get me wrong. There will, it will be completely, we've actually toured the I had a state licensor come out already and look at the right. 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 So that's um, a separate project that would be conducted by the state. So I'm not. I'm trying to understand, you know, what the what the purview of the board would be regarding any of that, because that's all going to be, as you know, completely vetted by many, many other people. Right. Um, We're just looking for permission to begin that process from you. And what we would like is to know where we are in that process, and also to, to know. It would be, if, if you don't need site plan approval, then I'm wondering who need, who's going to be looking at parking and traffic Ooh. impacts and some uh, of those things. Do you know who, what you spoke with? Planning consultant? I can pull the name up on my email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I'm just, I I'm just wondering. Director. Can you tell me her name? Mm -hmm. Who? It may have even been me. I'm the town I think it was. Caroline. I know it was you. It was so. you referred me to somebody else. I think I got an email from you. So. Yeah. We'll go revisit that email chain, but it's clear that it's going to have to, because it's a change of use in a commercial property, it's going to have to go through planning if you get zoning approval. But the zoning approval is the first step. Okay. It is zoning, then, then planning. Okay. okay, and the special exception is so what would be helpful? What would be helpful for us to see in the application is here's what the Rollins for Zoning Ordinance requires for a child care facility and here's how we meet it. Uh, because the special exception is for, it, we, we grant it, we say, ordinarily in this, um, in this district, child care, it only occurs, this use on mm -hmm. the property only occurs with what's called special exception. Okay. And so I think what you'll represent in the application is, here's what the ordinance requires, here's how we'll meet it, and that's why you can grant a special exception to us. Even though you're also, I think, going to go through site plan but you're going to say, we will go through site plan approval to hammer out parking. Um, it sounds like there's, uh, you made some statements about um, uh, sequencing drop-off time so that you know traffic impacts would be moderated. And so, mm -hmm. so we want to get that all. Well, one thing that I'd like to just leave everyone with if we're going to postpone is that the only place where a preschool is allowed within the town of Rollinsburg is inside of the unit. And if you've read any of your, um, the restrictions 
around running a preschool with the interior and exterior requirements, you actually permit it in a place where it can't be. So everywhere in town, it has to be, you have to get a special exception to open a preschool in the town, which is why there are none anywhere in town. Um, and mm -hmm. so, I don't know if we want to talk about hardship, but... Um, no, you don't have to talk about hardship. But if, you know... Uh, Only a hardship to some people. It's difficult. Yeah. So, um, and you, you said that in the right place, because Mr. Hinsman and Ms. Nastasi are members of the planning board, and they have um, the, the ability, as we come up on the zoning cycle, to uh, propose amendments to the uh, right. uh, table of use. So, um, I think, how long have you had to wait for this hearing? Uh, a couple months. Yeah. So let's try to work together with you to get it rescheduled promptly. Um, what, what I would encourage, if Mr. Clark is willing and, and, um, sure. uh, to have a chat with you, to kind of lay out a plan of attack um, and... I think that they ha we have to pick a date now so that it's in the minutes. In the minutes. So, so that, I, that they don't... Mm. Oh, that's true. Okay. Thank you. Thank so, you. Um, there's I can be ready in a week. There's um, another hearing that's going to be held on the 31st. If, if you were to to add that to that agenda, that, that would work. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. On the 31st. So we will reconvene on March 31st. Uh, for the hearing on case number 2002. And in the meantime, Mr. Clark, and you can confer on what additional, uh, you know, how to complete that application so you can make a good record to the board. I would like, can I ask a question? Um, how many <coughs> butters are here for that? Would you all like a meeting at the house so we can go over this more completely? Sort of what the plans are and what's happening? Would anyone yeah. want to cite you? I we'll think the done. more detailed um, yeah, description would be, would be a lot help, a mm -hmm. lot more helpful than having a. Site I do have a question like. as an abutter. Mm -hmm. Is that allowed? Who is? I mean, I know that I know that you know you probably don't own the property yet, but I right. can tell you as one of your closest yeah. abutters, okay. who hears everything that goes on there, I'd like to know who 408 Mechanic Street LLC is because I don't see you registered with the state. Oh, that's me. Okay. Right, oh. and that's an entity uh, that I formed to purchase the property. Okay. So um, I am actually, uh, well, Tom knows I'm an architect in town in Portsmouth. Mm -hmm. I've been there for 20 years, and I founded and run CJ Architects. And so um, are looking very seriously at purchasing the property because it's a beautiful little spot for a nice little classroom. Uh, this, my client is a preschool teacher. Uh, who has a lot of experience, two small children of her own, and actually the granddaughter of the board member, uh, Deanna? Deanna Rollo is a good friend of mine, actually. Um, right, and they're kind of texting back and forth about, sorry, I couldn't be here, and so forth. So she has a lot of ties to the community, and full disclosure, she is my daughter. Okay. So uh, I am helping her begin this cottage mm -hmm. business. Um, and uh, open this little preschool. Um, and, uh, you know, it'll be a very organized, um, art-inspired kind of a, uh, a program uh, that she has run in the past, and she has a lot of experience in that. So it would be very, very controlled and regimented. Mm -hmm. I don't have an issue with a preschool, per se, in mm -hmm. town. I have an issue with it in that location. I bought over here. I also lived in Portsmouth for many years. I, I had a business there. there. Okay, I, but I moved over here <laughs> in 2004. Tom can tell you he was mm -hmm. the uh, the inspector then. I have made a huge investment in my property. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that the people who lived there for a very long time have been since moved out, and I don't think they were the last ones there. Mm -hmm. They had two dogs that they would leave with the windows open in the garage part of it, <laughs> and they would go off, and those dogs would bark all day long. In that little location. teeny, Little teeny dogs <laughs> that I could hear with yeah. windows closed yeah. and yeah. air conditioners running. Mm -hmm. I love kids, don't get me wrong. I have one, I have grandchildren. I love them to death. Ozzie. I don't want to listen to them all day long. No, no, so no. Well, that, you know, can I, can, 
Can I just explain my approach? It's not, I know when people in. think of preschool, they think of daycare, they think oh. of infants, they think of toddlers, they think of screaming and crying. My approach is called slow looking. It's not, let me run around, let me scream, let me be wild. That's not effective, that's not productive, that's not how you know children should be treated or you know they need regulation, children yeah, yeah. on boundaries and regulations. Um, slow looking is taking a step back and noticing your surroundings, noticing, you know, not, oh, there's a bug, let me step on it, let me roar like a monster. Um, if, if I can suggest, um, if we want to move in a different, the, the zoning board still has Oh, we have some oh, good so business. Sure. So, um, and this is what uh, I said. I, yeah, I would like to explain. Because I know what you mean. I'm yeah. listening to the kids at the grade school. Love it. Happy little faces. I can hear them smiling no, and laughing. But, you know, it's not going to be. Yeah. And it's traffic. Do you know Shane, though? Sylvia? Yeah. Of the public. My good I would encourage you to continue this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, just so that you can, you know, mm -hmm. get more comfortable with what's um, being proposed here. Uh, but we do have some business that we have to take care of. Do you need me to request